This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with Mac the Knife Global. Mac the Knife Global, yes, yes. like it, like the it. The rebranding yes. has taken place. With me I've got Eddie Hearn, it's about five o'clock. Uh, half five. Half five. Stuck in traffic on the, where? Coming up to the M6. Coming up to the M6. It's oh going God. to be a long way home. We're nowhere near We're home. about 10 p.m. 10 p.m. home? 9.30. 9.30. Oh, We're going to stop. Okay. Little bonus chicken breast from Waitrose. It's all good. It's all good. Um, Crawling and Norris. Oh, Anthony Crawl. You you get on it as well. Oh, and you down Anthony Crawler. Oh, Anthony Crawler. Oh, and <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, press comments, well, it's good. Since the, um, the first fight, was there any other options for Crawler? Not really, like, after the first fight, everyone always, if you lose the fight, everyone always wants a rematch. And obviously, uh, I had that pre-negotiated going into the fight um, as a safety net. Um, and in the change room after, in the ring after, it was, get me the rematch, can't wait for the rematch. But then sometimes, a week or two after, People start looking at other options, and you know, and, and it wasn't that never really happened. Crawler just wants to fight Jorge Linares. He enjoyed the first fight. Everyone loved the first fight. He believes he can be better. It's a very tough fight. The rematch, the first fight, was a very tough fight, and that's the one he wants. He wants his belt back, and he wants the Ring Magazine belt, etc., um, etc. Et Robert Diaz said that we saw the best Jorge Linares in that first fight. He believe that we're going to see a better one yeah I think that wasn't very convincing that statement I love I love Robert Diaz but we definitely saw the best Jorge Linares ever in that fight but to see an even better one next time it's quite unusual especially at this stage in his career so I'm hoping for a worse Jorge Linares next time but even the same Jorge Linares, I think you'll see a better Anthony Crawler this time around. I really we do. need a better Anthony we, Crawler. We, of course we do. Yeah. Listen, this is the this is the high end. This is the elite level. This is the shizzle nizzle. Yeah, this is this is what it's all about. If you're not on it, if you're not razor sharp, if you're not the best you can be, you don't win these fights. And that's how it is. Talk to me about potentially what Anthony Crawler could have done. Aside from this rematch, what, what were the options um, out there for him? I mean, there's the Flanagan fight, which will always be there. We didn't really look at that this time around. We talked about it before. Um, there's going to have a, a warm-up fight or a you know a, a, a tick-over fight. But you know, I feel like there's a lot of fighters at the moment in, in the UK that are on in the final stage of their career. And when I say that, I don't mean like one or two fights. I'm talking like five or six fights. And Anthony's probably one of them. So he just wants big fights. If he's, if he's going to put 12, 14 weeks into his camp, at this stage he wants the biggest fights possible with the most on the line for the most amount of money. And that's what he's got. Correct. Um, the Battle of Blackpool. Oh, the Battle of Blackpool. Rose versus Arnfield. Rose versus Arnfield. WBA friends. International. Made it last night. Talked about it for about a month. Um, I'll tell you something now, if you own a pub, a restaurant, a cafe, a bakery, or a petrol station in Blackpool, on March the 25th, close it down, because they're all going to be in Blackpool. Uh, bakery at night? A 24 hour bakery. <laughs> <laughs> right, Let me start right. that again. If you've got a petrol station, a cafe, a restaurant, a bar, or a 24 hour bakery, close it down. Close it down. Really intriguing fight. You know, like I said in the press conference, for years, Armfield has been in the shadows of Rose in Blackpool. And the last couple of fights, you know, beat Ryder, beat Mick Hall. He's now top 10 with the WBA. He sort of made it made it there and uh, he fancies it. He's got great momentum. Brian hasn't got the momentum of Armfield. And I think it's a real 50-50 fight. A great chief support for the card, even if I may say so myself. Do you know what the, the thing is with Bobby Rimmer and Armfield, the way that ended? Because there was no, a should bit... we make something up? No, something did happen. Did because it? Bobby Rimmer said something to me, but didn't really tell me what it was. And then Jack Armfield just point where he said, I don't want to talk about Bobby Rimmer, okay? What, in it the didn't end? Yeah, it didn't this end nice. well. We got some, we got some he night. went, it didn't end well, but I don't want to talk about him. I'm doing fine as I am. Oh, like oh I like this. I like this. This is good. It's good. This is so, good. So, right, for you, you know, for the press conference we got, into the yeah, we've got some nice hate there between the camps already. This is yeah. good. 
I just think it's a good fight. I think it's a must win for Brian Rose. Absolutely must win. Step up for Marcus Morrison against Big the step up. Season, yeah, Jason, Jason Wellborn. Wellborn. I mean, we saw Wellborn have a great fight with Matthew Macklin. I know it wasn't the best Matthew Macklin, but still, I think it's a massive step up for Marcus Morrison uh, in terms of the opposition he's been facing already. And I think, rightfully so, I think he's ready. Let's see it. Absolutely. Um, Martin Ward against Maxi Hughes, yeah. mandatory, uh, defence of his card. First fight was brilliant. Second fight, uh, Ward stopped him in a great performance. And now Max Hughes come back for, with a couple of good wins and now he's mandatory. So we do that one on the 25th. Uh, Jose Burton will be on the card as well. A really good British light heavyweight title fight between Tommy Tatham and light, light heavyweight eliminator between Tommy Tatham and Liam Conroy. Both big ticket sellers. Uh, and there'll be one Olympian, maybe two, debuting as well on the card. What? The Coley? Could be a Coley, yeah, but there's some others to be announced next week. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, let's get straight into it. What's going on? This is the only reason you wanted the interview. No, of it? course not. Can't forget Crawler, million dollar. But, Khan goes on this morning with uh, Philip and. What's her name? Ollie Willoughby. Yeah. And basically says that Kelbrook don't want the fight. But, so the tweets went back and forth. Yeah, it's quite funny, you two. Um, So, just to clarify, Kelbrook doesn't want the fight at 70 30. Of course. Well, what do you think? Listen. But that's Do you think Kelbrook wants the fight? Come on. You know the situation. Yeah. You know Kelbrook. He's desperate for the fight. But, look, there's not. Over the years, we've had some bad blood between the camps. There is no bad blood between the camps. I'm in full dialogue with her team. It's all been, you know, uh, I'll say fruitful, but at least active. Um, and we have felt that 50-50 is the right split. You've got Amir Khan's probably a little bit better known. Kel Brook's the world champion. Both coming off big fights, both lost. Both need each other for this fight. Um, it became apparent a while ago that that split was not achievable. So I've been looking at ways with Asif Valley to look at minimum guarantees, guarantees plus upside, creative ways to come up with the right package for Kel Brook. So last Friday I, I went with Kel's dad to see Asif Valley and we sat down and we talked about a split and you know they talked about 70-30 and we talked about 50-50 and uh, we were nowhere close so we shook hands and we departed and that was it. Um, since then, I've had a couple of chats with Asif, and I still think, you know, while there's dialogue, the fight can happen. But I just don't think it'll happen in May. I think that Amir, because of the loss, because of his hand operation, and because of his personal issues at the moment, I think he wants a warm-up fight in May. So maybe we both have a fight in May, and then move on and make it in October. I don't know. So Khan tweeted and said that. Even with a 70-30 split, Brook earns more money than from what he got for Golovkin. Mm, not necessarily. But even with a 50-50 split, Amir will earn more than he earned against Canelo. Did he dispute that on that? He did, yeah. but I know what he made to make Canelo, and he makes more on 50-50. So, common sense kind of says, you want 50-50, he wants 70-30. What, was the talk of 60-40 ever well, mentioned? Not, that's not really common sense, is it? That's just in the middle. So, well, yeah, but, that's how yeah, but, it goes, isn't but it? is that fair? I mean, that figure's never been discussed. That's not on the table. So, listen, when you're talking about 5%, I can talk to Kel and his dad and try and get something over the line. When you're talking about 20%, then it's, it's not even a conversation. And that's why it was a very quick meeting. I don't think 60 40 is fair. Would Kel accept the fight on 60 40? I don't believe so. But that's not even on the table. It's not. Uh, that's flatly turned down by the Khans. It's not even, you know. So, uh, as regards to the Khans, it's 70 30 or no deal. Basically, yeah. But I think, as well, I said this to, to Kel's dad, I think the only way they'll take the fight in May is if it's an unbelievable deal for Amir Khan that he can't turn down. So I don't, I don't blame him. I think he's thinking, I want a warm up fight, but listen, if the deal's unbelievable, I'll take the fight. Mm. Can you get to them levels where you can make it unbelievable for Amir and for Kel? There's only 100% in the pie. 
Mm, so, so it's, looking it's very frustrating. It's so stupid as well. So stupid. So the the, the meeting the other day was as quick as you said it was. Five minutes. Then it went to Bolton because Bolton's one of the grounds that you know we we're, we're talking to. We're talking to quite a few venues. I had a walk around there, sat down for the meeting. Five minutes. So since then, what has been the conversations with Asif Valley? No, just a couple of conversations. I'm due to meet him tomorrow. Just there's other business as well to discuss. Not just the Kelbrook fight. So, but that that will carry on. Do you believe that they will budge on the split? I still think this fight will get made. But more likely for the middle yeah, to let up. Listen, I'm tired of saying it. I mean, we've said it. 20 times haven't we no it won't happen next but it'll definitely happen after no well, it won't happen this time but maybe next year so maybe we don't talk about it ever again until well, you're ready to announce it what fun would that be though oh what what laughs what fun would that be um it's a shame it is a shame and I think you know I mean Everything that I read on Twitter was 70-30 is a complete joke insult. Do you concede that Khan, what he says about him being the He's a, a bigger a name. Side. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't mean he's the, he's the Kel's world champion. He's coming off a strong performance against Golovkin, which he got a lot of props, got a lot of credibility. But I, I concede that he's not as well known globally as Amir Khan. Well, listen, if anyone can do it, I suppose you could do it. Do you know what? That's the, probably the most sensible thing I've ever heard you say. <laughs> so, you know, people watching this, a bit downhearted right now, tell them why not to be, Eddie. Tell them why not to be. <laughs> just don't be down. Just smile. Just smile. It's a new year, right? If you're watching this video, you are probably a boxing fan, right? Boxing's great. Isn't it great? Yes. Everyone, loads of broadcasters, loads of promoters, people trying to be promoters, new blood coming into the game, new fighters turning over, Olympians, you know, it's great. So, just finally on this Kel Brook situation, obviously looking unlikely that Kel Brook's next fight will be that, judging by what you're saying. Um, what's the situation regarding Kel Brook's next fight and also the Errol Spence so mandatory. Spence is the mandatory yeah. um, purse bids for that in about two weeks um, I want him to move to £154 but he doesn't really want to because he's world champion at 147 but I've seen what he goes through to make 147 and after making 160 I don't see why he should deplete himself to make £147 um, if it's against Amir Khan he will literally cut his leg off to do it but we're just talking at the moment and I think the, the options are is either to stay at 147 or to move up to 154. He's a much better fighter at 154 than he is at 147. So common sense tells you that's what you have to do. But we have to weigh everything up and um, we'll make a decision in the next couple of weeks. So you've got two weeks, otherwise he has to vacate? Yeah, he has to vacate and move up to 154, yeah. which I think he should. I think he'd be a great light middleweight. Yeah. Or we go through the purse bid scenario with, with Errol Spence. Do you know, um if he vacates at 147 and moves up, where does he stand in the light middleweight rankings? Well, he'll be ranked with the governing body. So he'd go and have a big fight at 154 pounds in May. Yeah. And then he'd look for a world title. So your hunch is that Spence Brook probably won't happen? I don't know. I, I don't. I want him. It's not, people say, oh, you. you uh, running from the Brook fight. He's just boxed Golovkin. Get back up to cut out. You were, yeah, saying, so you were saying that he's running away from, running from Spence. But he's happy to fight Spence. He just boxed Golovkin at middleweight. But I think that he's a depleted fighter at 147. And, well, not the fighter that he is at 154. So me and the training team, we know he can make 147. But we think he's much better at 154. So it's something we've got to think about carefully. Definitely. But either way, you expect him to fight in male drug? Yes, definitely. So ITV had the... Uh, show the other day did you yeah. watch it yes what did you think honest I it, assessment I thought it looked like an amateur show from the 1980s ok <laughs> when you've stopped laughing behind the lens I don't I mean 
it's hard it's hard to be critical because people think I'm just slagging it off but that's if it, if it, if it looked the nuts I would tell you I thought it looked great but it didn't it looked like an ABA show from the 1980s a um, couple of decent fights actually I quite enjoyed the fight <coughs> but quite low level fights and I don't mean low level in terms of the fight like I just mean for a TV show do you understand mm. like if I went to Adam Smith with that main event I don't think he'd want that on like he he might accept it on the TV show but he wouldn't be very happy that it was on like on the TV slot and that's not no disrespect to Robbie Davis Jr hold on one second you just got a pause Quiggy I'm just doing an interview with Coogan I'll call you back in well three hours <laughs> All right, I'll call you back in about 20 minutes. Go on, how did you get on? Are you Hold on, you pause that. I'll pause it now. Oh. What did Quiggy want? What was that about? Uh, no, Quiggy uh, just talking about his future. Looks like he could fight on the Wembley card. Okay. The Joshua Bitchfield card, so just sorting out at the moment. World title fight? Uh, or a uh, serious eliminator status. And he loves an eliminator. I'd like to make Scott Quiggy against Lee Selby. What for that card? Mm, uh, possibly. Possibly. Obviously fighting this week, isn't it? Mm. Um, where were we? You're talking about ITV, the yeah. show. Right. Yeah, I thought. I mean, I quite. I thought the fights were reasonably entertaining, but I just thought the look and the feel was like. Do you know what it looked like? It looked like. You know, we do the PDC darts. It looked like the BDO version. I don't watch the dark so I'm just, yeah. Darren's nodding his head. Do you agree, Dale? Yeah. Yeah, fair point. You're kind of like a neutral. Don't get me involved. So, did you watch the ITV boxing? No. You bottle job. <laughs> no, but again, and, and look, I'm, I think the more boxing on TV, the better. But it didn't, if I was a neutral viewer, I didn't watch that show and go, Oh, that was unbelievable. I've got to be there. I've got to be at the next one. That is, that is banging. Your thoughts? Um, I didn't see it. I didn't. I was out. I genuinely didn't see it. I, I was up to date with the results on Twitter, but I didn't watch it. So when you were saying what you were saying, mm. I don't know how to relate to that. So I, I genuinely didn't see it. Mm. But, um, do you think they'll... Will it, be similar for the Eubank show or uh, what the production yeah be, I just, I'm not I don't mean to blow our own trumpet but we're very good at what we do um, and that doesn't just come down I'm not, not just talking about the fights okay? I'm talking about the whole show the production not even the TV production, just the look and the feel of the event, the look, everything down to the ring, the backdrops, everything. I mean, they did a weigh-in. They didn't even have a backdrop. It looked like it was in a classroom at a school or something like that. So you've got to, you can't sell a product like that. You've got to, the public look at that and go, what is that? Where, what is that? Is that a weigh-in? it's got to be on a major backdrop with a big crowd with a great MC with noise with music and it's got to look like it's a big event even if it's not you've got to make it look like it's a big event and that's where they struggle because they've got no platform they've got no voice see I don't even think anyone knew that show was on that was a problem and it rated alright it wasn't disastrous but they've got to They've got to have, and this is where my mouth will help, because everyone knows I talk too much, but you've got to. You've got to spread the word, the gospel, about this show. Don't, let's, it's not a secret. Let's not hide somewhere in some little arena and not make any noise. Let's bang the fucking drum. You know? Let's tell the world. That's what I say to young fighters. I'm going to embarrass you so badly because I'm going to bang the drum about you to the whole world when I'm in meetings with broadcasters around the world when I'm with sponsors in meetings when I'm on Twitter when I'm on Instagram when I'm doing your interviews 
going to beat the drum and I'm not going to stop. But you have to give the perception at least that it's a big show, a big event that you can't miss, even if it's not. And that, my friend, is called hype. Know all about that motherfucker. <laughs> um, what's your thoughts on David Hay and uh, the Shafe Meister? Interesting, yeah, interesting. Um, good, I think. Honestly, the more people having a go, the better. Like, it's so much easier for me to go to Sky and say, Barney, oh, you got ITV, you got BT, you got to stick some more money in, mate, than it is going. Barney, you've got to stick some more money in, and by the way, we've got no competition and there's no other broadcasters interested. You have to ask yourself, why are these broadcasters now interested in boxing? I love the way how patronising you are. What? Well, someone like Richard Shaker okay. has been in the business all them years with Golden Boy, etc. Yeah, nice to see people giving it a go. It's giving the UK market a go. It's just like if I went to America and gave it a go. I'd expect them to say the same. It's good to see Eddie Earn over here having a go. I'm having a go. We're all having a go, aren't we? But what I'm saying is, is that they're all having a go for a reason. So currently we've got you lot, <laughs> Box Nation, ITV, yeah. Channel 5. Yeah, they've gone a bit quiet, haven't they? Oh. They did. The last one was uh, Taylor. Taylor. That was a good few months ago. All right, we're st they're still there though. Yeah. Them, All right, mate. And we, uh, I think there's talk about um, Schaefer and uh, Hay doing something with UK TV. With Dave. No. So it's all good. It's great. It, honestly, it is great. See, Frank announced his uh, upcoming schedule for yeah. BT and Box Nation yesterday. Oh, BT as well, but yeah. with Box Nation. Um, yeah, did you uh, get any of the catch any of it? I see, yeah, I saw I saw the announcements, uh, the schedule. Um, I don't think it's a schedule that jumps up and slaps you in the face. You know, I think it's the same as similar to what he's been doing before. Really, I think um, I like the Williams uh, Smith fight. I think that's a good fight. And uh, he's made us a very good offer for McDonald to fight Butler, which I think, subject to contract, we'll probably proceed with that fight. Good. Uh, which is a good fight. Um, what else did he announce? Billy Joe. I don't think he announced his fight yet. Flanagan Petrov, which is a better fight than the ones he's been having, but Petrov is Petrov's okay, but no one's ever heard of him. Let's go. Uh, what else was there? Fury Fury. What, oh, you announced that fight? Oh, I was saying that. Imminent so he didn't announce that fight. Um, Warrington against Michael McCulloch. Marco McCulloch. Marco McCulloch. Uh, it's a strange fight. Uh, Nicola Adams, good to see him going into women's boxing because I know Frank's a big long term supporter of women's boxing uh, no it's just all good it's all good I mean that the difference between that is see that Frank is better at that on the stage the big graphics so sometimes it's called polishing a turd right it's not what he's doing no but that's the expression but some people are very good at polishing turds so what that means is even if it's not great you can poly you can dress it up and make it look unbelievable. And I'm good at that. So is Frank. Because you see him up there on the stage with the graphics and it looks great. Even if it's not, at least it's in the mind that this looks quite big, a big big screen, everyone's up there. And that's what I was talking about with the ITV. So my advice to other promoters and even promoters around the world is give that turd a good polish sometimes. You're such a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Oh God, I can imagine. I know why 80% of the uh, boxing people. It's much more it. than that. No, but how funny was it today when everyone got a round of applause and then uh, Robert Diaz goes, 
before I start, I just want to say it's brilliant and what a great job Eddie Hearn's doing. So first of all, I'd like to say a round of applause for Eddie. And it went. It's like one of David Brent. And I went, I went. And I said to Crawler, I've just realised I was clapping myself there. I tried to explain to Jorge Linares about apples and pears earlier. Yeah. It's quite funny. Did he? Yeah. No. He gave it a go with the apples did and pears. Did he say it? Yeah, he did, yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, so. But that's, like I said, there's promotion, it's hype. It's, you've got to convince the public that this is worth watching or this is worth buying a ticket to. Your long term credibility will come down to if it actually is or not. Give us some um, undercard updates on. Mm, let's go with Hay Bellu first. So you've got O'Hara Davis against Derry Matthews. You've got. Uh, there's two fights I can't really announce. I think one's getting announced tomorrow. It's a cracker. It's a cracker. It's going to shock a lot of people. But it's really good. Uh, there'll be a couple of Olympians on the card as well. Um, Ted Cheeseman will be on the card as well. It's like his first title fight. But there's two other decent-sized title fights to be announced. One, I think, tomorrow. And it's it's good. Okay. You know what it is, so don't start going... Go no, I'm just... I'm going OK. Sit out. Uh, Josh, Klitsch. Yeah, I haven't done too much work on that card yet, to be honest with you. That's going to start... Next week, Quig uh, could be on it. Um, I wanted to make Burton Buglioni the rematch on there. Um, and there's a few others in the mix for world title shots as well, which I'm not going to say too much about. But I think there'll be four title fights and one, two, three Olympians mixed in as well. What bill is Kate saying at all? She could be on that one. What? Joshua? Yeah. She's not going to be on the Golovkin bill, is she? No. What happened was, we were talking to Golovkin about Katie Taylor going on the card, which everyone wanted to do, obviously Irish. Uh, and then top rank, Todd De Berth mainly, threw his absolute toys out the prem, because they've got the Conlon show the night before. Yeah. So Golovkin went on March the 18th, which they weren't very happy about, but let it go. Then they heard Katie Taylor was on. And they, they threw their toys. I said, we've got an Irish show. Katie Taylor's massive. And she's going on the night before. So then it was a big, like, not an argument, but it was, like, just drama. <coughs> and we were going to do the show on Sky. But then we thought, you know what? It's not going to get through. So we, we're we not doing the fight. I think Box Nation are doing the Golovkin fight now. Um, and Katie Taylor, she may box the week before in Washington on the... Um, uh, Charlo card in Washington. Okay. Um, what else do I have to ask you? Oh yeah, Callum Smith against Anthony Durrell. Mm. Get that over here. Get I really want to. I don't want to do it at Anfield. Do you? Yeah. Okay. I want to do a massive Liverpool show with some of the Smith brothers in world title fights. Not on the 22nd? No, no, no. So are you still doing the 22nd, don't you? At the moment, yeah, Echo Arena. Okay. Could that change then if uh, Callum Smith is to fight in Liverpool? Maybe, I guess, but I'm talking to Mayweather about doing that Mayweather matching thing yeah. on that day. You're actually talking to Floyd himself, yeah? No, he texted us just. Oh, he's here, I think. Oh, he's actually called in now. Yo, Floyd, how you doing, mate? Yeah, 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 all good, man, all good, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, still looking April the 22nd, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyone can get it, yeah. With Coogan at the moment, actually, yeah. Coogan. No, he's, he's a guy, he does the interviews in the UK. You know, really quite big, you, you know. Never heard of him? Oh. He's sort of, he's, he's hovered round you a few times, but I don't think he's ever actually got an interview. No, not Ellie Secback, no, no. Okay, mate, I'm going to have to shoot, so I'll call you in a bit. Cheers, mate. I'm disappointed in myself, because I just sat here and filmed that whole two-minute charade. Look, that's Dylan White on the phone. 
Ozeibon. Bom dia. Isso é isso. He's in for some big pay-per-view bonuses from that uh, Joshua Molina card. Jeez! Come and test the number then. No. Can I say the number? You always you ask me if it was more or less than Joshua Dillon. All right, can I say it? Because you are not saying it then. No. Why? What's wrong with me saying it? It's that? more than the, the white Joshua. White Joshua did about 420. Yeah, keep going north, baby. Dale, what are you saying about some services? So we're going to go... Oh, you're doing the interviewing. Just, just pull out, go, 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 go. Not this one. We'll go, we'll go. Carry on chatting, okay. I'll, I'll pick one in a minute. My batteries are a dice room. What else have we got to talk about? A couple of new signings next week. Lawrence Acoli was announced uh, last week. Love Very excited. Yeah, I like Acoli a lot. Are you a penny boy? Of course, honorary penny boy. Honorary penny boy. No, he's good. He's got the sauce, so yeah. it's all good. Um, are you signing Buatzi or what? Uh, we're talking to Buatzi. A lot of people are talking to Buatzi. A lot of people are talking to Joe Joyce. A lot of people are talking to Joe Cordina. A lot of people are talking to Josh Kelly. I know it's like about a couple of them fires. Do you? Ooh. Yeah. Um, we will announce a minimum of one Olympian yeah. next week. Um, so you, you're sort of you're planned up until May. Yeah, you got obviously Frampton, Santa Cruz on Sky this weekend. Yeah. Then you got February 25th, Gavin McDonald against Ruiz for the world title. Vargas. Sorry, Ruiz. Uh, Ray Vargas. Yeah, Ray Vargas. I think Ruiz. Oh, he's that's who. Uh, he's super bantamweight champion. Yes. And then you got uh, Coyle and Campbell on the card as well. And then you got a week later. You've got Hey Bell You, Davis Matthews, and to announce tomorrow. And then you've got March 25th, you've got Crawler Linares. Then you've got April the 8th, could be Cleverly Bramer. April the 15th is going to be Burns and Dongo unification. April the 22nd, we're going to be in Liverpool. And then May the 13th, we're going to be in Birmingham, and we're going to announce that tomorrow. Yeah, fine. Okay. But past that, you've, you're still sort of pencilling for what's the yeah. trend. Yeah, well, we've got Brooke, Brooke. the return of Brooke. We've got uh, De Gale, yeah. whoever he fights. Callum Smith. Groves, Callum Smith, Crotch, who knows. Uh, then you've got uh, Callum Smith against Anthony Durrell. And then all the guys who boxed early in the year. Ryan Bennett's coming up for a world title fight as well. So, all good. Cardinal Campbell maybe in this one? I want to make Cardinal Campbell, yeah. I think it's a good British fight. Okay. All right, I think we're, we're good for the moment. All good. Um, you going to adjust your thing tomorrow? Yeah, are you going? Of course. Good. I'll be there. So if anything develops, we'll have to catch up then tomorrow. Sweet. Parting message for all, the, for all the haters, for the lovers. Doesn't matter whether you're a hater or a lover, we're all one. We're all one. Just enjoy your life. Don't, don't, it ain't even boxing related. Just enjoy your life because one day we'll all be brown bread. Oh, uh, right. It's true, though, isn't it? Yeah. Don't you ever think that nothing really matters, does it? Nothing really matters. Anyone can see. No? No, no, no. Um, yeah, just enjoy yourself. Um, it's quite late don't, 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 don't take things too seriously. No. Don't take things too seriously. Yeah, we was late to the press conference though, didn't we? They was all waiting for us. And I, the other bit of advice that I'll give you is, and I promise this is true, if you... The more you encourage others' success, the more it will bring you. I promise you that. When I was younger, I never wanted anyone to do well around you know like when I'm talking about at school and like even if I was playing cricket or something like that I always wanted to be the individual best so like you almost someone was going into bat and you didn't want them to get out but you know what I mean you didn't want them to outdo you do you know what I'm saying but as I've as you become more comfortable in yourself honestly there's not one person might be one or two 
but I, I want everyone to do really well. I want you to go out there and just smash the views. Like it would actually make me happy you doing well. You know what I mean? If Darren, right, went out on Saturday night and 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 just miraculously nicked a bird, <laughs> right, I would be over the moon. <laughs> Only joking, Dow. But I promise, if you encourage others' success, yours will follow. All right. On, on that note, Eddie Earn, thanks for joining Rifle TV, and uh, 